sir you are muted good thanks for starting the recording again and uh, so uh, my full screen is visible the email template yes yeah so let me go ahead so basically as i said subject should be clear and address should be dear professor last name saves you from sir ma'am and all these things by the way you can write like if you write dear sir or dear ma'am if you find the gender you can write that so then this thing as i said and from start only you can see that you are trying to be a little bit particular okay which is uh, which will tell them that you actually put some effort uh, rather than you know i i get a lot of emails for project assistants postdocs and other things it's a generic email they copy paste the same email to all physics faculty and i have evidence for that because my own colleagues here got the same email okay and those kind of things you know back bring a bad name to the institute to the country in general so here as i said again uh, i have told you how to write this thing and then um, you, uh, typically you just attach the resume okay um, so you just attach the resume and uh, letter of motivation is not required i would not recommend it but if you want you can do it and if you feel that you have made a very good case you can write but typically just resume is fine and then that's it you just thank for your time thanks very much for your time and attention best or sorry best is actually my signature uh, you should sign sincerely or something so when i send these slides i will say sincerely or uh, kind regards or these kind of things so um, now say and then your full name and then your year and uh, institute those you can write okay so this is generic uh, kind of template you can of course change it according to your liking what you should never do is as i said okay somebody is asking what is a letter of motivation so letter of motivation uh, is basically one or two paragraphs about why you want to work in their lab so basically this email is short right as i said this email i want you to keep it to only this and it's a very very short email so i have some fillers which is making it big but if you write this email it's very very short so if you want to make a case that you know i find you know like why you are interested in molecular biology or why you find viruses very interesting and why uh, you want to work in renewable energy you know from childhood you have been thinking about these kind of things and everything if you have that kind of burning desire you can write one or two paragraph in a word document and attach it it's called letter of motivation okay uh, uh, but not 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 really needed in my case like it's like uh, yeah much like sop but that's for phd application that's very very big i would say this is very very small so that like if they are interested first of all if they don't delete your email then uh, they can see my reason for not attaching it is that if your resume is okay and if the person has a position they will typically get back to you and if they have any questions they will ask you anyways so i don't think letter of motivation serves a purpose uh, but some people do and um, i don't think there is a harm in it so you can do it uh, but i don't think it's required okay good so uh, yeah so so then some more things about email so be polite but be clear which means that you should ask for summer internship opening you should never send this pleasing kind of email oh your research is so great and you know i am so interested and I, but forget to ask like whether you have summer internship opening in this year or not so you have to request what you want from them okay and then uh, uh, send only one reminder if for especially if it's a very uh, particular group i remember uh, for my postdoc i applied to mit and uh, i didn't get a response and i uh, i sent a reminder uh, after two weeks and then i got a response uh but send only one reminder okay if somebody is not responding after, first only send reminders to places you really want to work with where you really think that this is the group i really want to be in only in those groups you send a reminder others uh, you just send one email and if you send a reminder only send one reminder don't send more than one reminder okay you don't want to appear desperate there are many institutes in india there are many uh, professors in india and you have opportunity find new people and uh, again uh you should not do writing write abroad at this level i can guarantee you please do not do that uh but uh, since as i said i'm not going to repeat this talk i'm just telling you that when you are doing it uh please be very very careful because you are representing your institute you are representing your country one bad or stupid email from you and then those institutes will never take anyone from isar barampur and in some cases even you know like they can just like say that okay you know most indian institutes are also bad um so ayush is asking sir should be applied to more than one faculty of same institutes or not it's not a great idea but you can i mean but if you write this particular emails as i suggested you then they both will see that uh, what interest you have in their group right so then it's not bad but if you write the same email copy paste to both people then it is bad so typically i would uh, i would maybe not do it uh, more than two uh, i would say uh, but uh, it's not a sin to do it so you can do it to two people um my general feeling is not great about this but but you can do it but again as i said there are many institutes in india so i list some of them so institutes to look at iisc 
TIFR, all the IITs, all the ICFs. There are a lot of NPLs, you know, National Physical Laboratory. There are a lot of NC, uh, not, NC, not, 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 not a lot, I guess. There is only one NCL in Pune. I will remove this. And then there are some central universities. There is BHU. Uh, there, is, uh, there are a lot of other central universities which are very, very good. Then there are a lot of CSIR research institutes. There is an uh, Institute of Mineral and uh, my, uh, Metallurgical Technologies, IMMT. Uh, I'm forgetting the full name probably. Uh, but that's in Bhubaneswar. That is very, very good. There is Institute of Physics, which is very good. Uh, there is NICER. You know, there is a Center for Excellence in Basic Sciences. Uh, Mumbai University has great people. Uh, Delhi University has great people. JNU can have very, very excellent people, right? So, so there are a lot, a lot of uh, places. And uh, just find their website. If you have no interest, find faculty page. See what interests you. If you have interest, then you can use Google to find uh, people in those interests already. Okay. So do the best, but do not fret. Uh, whether you uh, get an internship or not, because I just told you, and I will give you an example that even without any internship, people have managed to uh, get into good schools. Now, how does that happen? One is that you are definitely going to have an MS project. So that is always there. And then the second thing you can always do if you don't find a course project outside is to work with one of the faculty who is here. You can always do a course pro uh, um, a project uh, in semester, but you can also, if you don't find, let's say find anything in summer, then Maybe in summer also you can find some uh, someone to work here also. So so those things uh, will always be there. So don't think you haven't gotten any external internship, so your chances are done or something. Okay. And uh, by the way, uh, again, focus on your coursework. Okay. I don't care about school. Doesn't mean I, no, no one cares about scores, right? So that doesn't mean get stressed. But uh, there should be no reason that you should not have good scores, right? I mean, like courses are there, faculty is there, you know, assignments are there. You do all the things and you look at your friends, you know, I always say no, none of us is Superman, right? We are all in Aisar Barampur, so we all know, you know, so yeah, none of us is like a prodigy. So if someone, some people can score well, every one of us can score well. I know in exam, something or other happens. That is okay. Let it be. And you have a lot of long time ahead. In five years, there is a 36 credit project. So be confident, continue doing well, your scores will improve. That's how it happened with me. I've been very open about my bad scores, right? I told you guys, I got a C in calculus, right? And, but I still ended up with a gold medal, which is across all departments, not only physics, by the way. So that was across all departments. So that can happen. You continue to improve slowly. But does that mean anything? Like, have I ever benefited from that? I don't think so. Most of my places I got into because of my research uh, experience, not because of uh, um, gold medal or something. At least that's what I believe. Okay. So because, because I know that, see, gold medal or something, these things are only for one person, right? One person, like, and in this institute or even at IIT Bombay, is only one person good? No, right? Like there is always a team of people. So you should always think like that and uh, don't target like one particular position or one particular score, but try to do well at your level. Okay. So I will stop here for questions. Uh, you can either ask audibly or I will look at chat and you can drop some questions if you have. Um, I put together an entire document where people asked questions. I can share my screen and show them to you. No, I think only two people asked actually. No, uh, people ask. asked today morning. So there are like 10, 11 questions over there. You can read out maybe because I don't want to remove the screen. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the first question was, I have a common question regarding the internship that after choosing everyone's particular field, there are thousands of institutions and professors all over India on that topic. So how can we choose among them that under his or her guidance, we can do better? Or we just have to take the risk to choose anyone and gather experience as we don't know any of them. So they're basically asking, how do I know? How yeah, I yeah, I know, I know. I got it, got it. Yeah, let's keep it short. So, so I 100% understand. First of all, you know, like I, it, I'm very exasperated. You guys are always so afraid, you know, I don't get it. See, yes, the first of all, the person who has uh, whatever he has uh, or she has said in that question is 100% right. You apply to some people, you do your best, your groundwork. Uh, which I have told you, go to their website, look at their publications, ensure that they are recent publication, look at the people in their group, figure out if they have a good kind of group dynamic going on and everything, and then you apply. But even after all this hard work, it might turn out that they are a terrible advisor, right? But that is true for anything in life. We do not know. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Please be bold and take whatever life gives. You do your hard work and then you don't worry about result. I have to talk so much about Krishna, but I still feel that, you know, it has not really penetrated. But uh, you do your best. You do your best job. Don't uh, uh, have any lack of hard work and uh, do your groundwork, which I've told you, looking at groups and all that. And then if, let's say if the advisor turns out to be terrible, well, tough luck, you know, happens to everyone and it's okay. You know, you will find something else and do something else. And uh, 
uh, continue to do your best. That is that is the point. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? So next question, I'm putting it in the chat so you can read it. Okay. Good. So thank you. Um, I messed up my midterms really badly. Not ha. Huh? So same thing, right? And don't don't worry about these things. As I said, uh, eight plus is a good score. Below eight is also fine. And like even above six, like you know, between six to eight, you can get internships. But then you have to do what I'm saying, okay? Which means you have to apply individually to professors who can look at the profile and if they have positions or, uh, for example, then again, you have to tone down your expectations also accordingly, right? For example, you may not get into, let's say, IIT Delhi or IIT Bombay, but maybe there are a lot of new IITs where there are great people doing a lot of research. Maybe not everyone is applying there, right? Maybe they have not done as much hard work as you. If you burn the midnight oil, if you make a bigger list than them, if you write down the professors which they have not written, then you will apply, you will get that positions, other people will not, okay? So you ensure that you do this groundwork, you make a list of professors and you apply, okay? So that is up to you. So that hard work is up to you. So grades, as I said, um, it's not a big deal. And uh, previously, if you have not done internships, I know none of you have, that is okay. But show some interest. Show that uh, you have read some uh, article, you have read some popular article, you have maybe done some online course, or maybe you have discussed with the faculty or something like that, right? So write in the previously, as I said, in that one line you need to write, where you have show that previously you have done something. It can be self-learning, uh, self-reading. So, so that will happen. So I, by the way, my general message is of strength, okay? Um, so in this question slide, I've not read this, but what I see often in this institute, I'm sorry to say that I've seen some people crying here and there in corridor. I've talked to them, I've generally talked to them, and I've seen people struggling a lot here. Um, I, I don't know, it hurts me a lot. What I have told many people sometimes out of, you know, this, that you leave this institute, leave I said, go somewhere else, you know, maybe teach some kids in a village, join an NGO, do whatever you want, which gives your heart the satisfaction, do something good, be satisfied, be happy, be strong, be bold, okay? Do not think, do not like these ambitions and all that, you know, I mean, it's good to have, but uh, to think that, you know, this MIT or, you know, this, uh, I don't know, IIT or, or something else uh, will actually um, um, uh, solve all your problems, that is that is not true. I mean, you know, you, you yourself know, again, don't take my word, look at the data, how many, you know, suicides happen, how many people are in uh, depression in, in those kind of places. So, you know, so that's what I find very hurtful to me when I see people being scared and anxious. As I said, science is supposed to help these kind of things. Science is supposed to take you beyond that, make you happy in what you're doing. Enjoy research, enjoy learning new things. Not put you in anxiety, etc. That's what I've noticed. And that's why I'm doing this talk because many people come to me with SRFP internships and all that. And I notice that people are very scared. They are feeling weak. Uh, don't be, don't be, okay? Don't be. Other question, please. Um, uh, I think you've already answered this. It's regarding how do we write to professors, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, so let me read this. Uh, how do we write to professors that we deserve this internship or we want to contribute in their research when we are not that much familiar with their lab works here? Make yourself familiar. See, there is time, right? December is time. December, you sit down and make yourself familiar. Google those, those things. Read Wikipedia. You know, Wikipedia, many people think that, oh, you know, Wikipedia XYZ. Wikipedia is very, very good. Have, have you written, the, the, uh, read the uh, page on particle physics on Wikipedia or let's say quantum field theory or something like that? Read Wikipedia. Read, uh, make yourself familiar. There is a lot of time before summer. December is there. January is there. Read those things and say that uh, uh, I have read, you know, and again, you can't say I have read Wikipedia, but from Wikipedia, find some reference and uh, then cite that. Uh, maybe read Griffiths on your own, you know, maybe read some uh, other book, Strange Theory of Light and Matter by Feynman on your own. Maybe there is a book on gravitation by Kipner, uh, Kip, um, Kipner Misner and Thorn. Uh, you can, Kip, I think Wheeler, Kipner and Thorn. Wheeler, Kipner and Thorn, you can read that book. It's a very famous book. I might be forgetting the author. So if you're interested in general theory of relativity, read that book on your own. You can find PDFs uh, around and uh, you can read. If you need help, come to your faculty. I'm pretty sure Ujjal Ji, Sandeep Ji, me, Vyas, anyone who will see you um, working sincerely on any of this, we will help. By the way, don't ignore your coursework. That is one thing which instructors here don't like. That if you are not doing well in optics and then you are studying like, I don't know, how does a laser amplification works, then they will not be happy, right? So you work hard here in the institute and then you go and tell them that, sir, I'm interested in learning this and I'm sure they will teach you. There are books on lasers. There are books on everything. So you acquire that knowledge, okay? And then tell the professor that I have read this book or I've done this course. And uh, then basically, uh, uh, then you can say confidently that uh, you are interested in their group and you can contribute productively, okay? Good. 
Uh, the next Thank question you. is, if we are planning to go into the industrial field after MS, how do we find internships based on practical and application of the topic, which can land us opportunities to work in the industry after MS? Right. So, so I'll be very, very uh, frank here. And again, this is again opinionated. I'm not in industry, so I may not be able to give you an accurate picture. I feel opportunities in biology and chemistry are more compared to physics. Uh, because uh, biology and chemistry, I guess they can go to pharma places and biotechnology places and vaccine industries and these kind of things. So my request is that uh, write to those people and uh, we will, as an institute, try to have some sort of session from people from those institutes as well. For physics, what I request is get good at coding, get good at software, get good at data analysis, get good at statistical analysis. And then it doesn't matter whether you do it in an institute or an industry, as long as you have these skills and those internships written on your CV, you will definitely land up a good uh, job after MS, okay? So what you need to do is to build your skills. When from physics, what do people expect? From physics, people expect data analysis. From physics, people expect software. From physics, people expect mathematical skills, uh, logical thinking, rational thinking. And those can be reflected in uh, any particular context. So uh, try to gain that experience, whether in industry or in uh, um, um, uh, academia. Both are fine, okay? The next, next is, one. do extracurricular activities hold significance in enhancing a CV for internship applications and should we put them in our CV? Again, personal opinion, uh, I do not consider them. Uh, in graduate applications, some institutes to distinguish if everything is else is equal, then they will look at that. Internships, definitely, as I said, you know, not that many are going to clash. Like I can tell you, you guys don't have enough scores. I'm sorry to say that, you know, work hard man, in the courses and all that, right? So, so I don't think you guys are going to uh, improve anything by extracurricular, but do them. Do them because they make you happy. Again, you know, I'm seeing the same trend everywhere. You do something because you want something in terms of career and ambition. Please do something because you like it. Do something because you enjoy it. Okay. So if you like extracurricular activities, do them. Regarding putting on your CV, I would say for internships, do not do that. That is my personal opinion. Uh, if you have something very significant, like you are, I don't know, like won some ISM in some badminton or some individual sport, you can put I, I, uh, I guess. I don't know. Again, yeah. The next one is... I, 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 I probably wouldn't do it. That is my personal opinion. I would not do it. Next could one. I can read it. So that's fine. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Could you recommend online platform or project ideas suitable for future physics major that would effectively enhance their CVs? So, I mean, up to you, right? There are a lot of things. So, again, th there also you need to do groundwork. I cannot tell everything. Although, so, uh, but I'll tell you. So, online platform, for example, Coursera is there, right? And then some courses are paid also. So if you can spend some money, Udemy doesn't have very costly courses. I've noticed some of them are some thousands here and there. Udemy is there, Coursera is there. Find good international uh, instructors who are attached to reputed universities like Stanford, MIT, and other places, okay? And uh, you can also look at reviews and how many people have taken those kind of courses. Uh, those can be good. And regarding project ideas, for example, if you are into software and machine learning and all that, Kaggle is a big platform. Project Euler for computer science kind of things is a big platform. So these things exist. You can have a GitHub thing. And again, these are only for coding, but I'm just saying you can have... Um, so regarding physics major, you are saying. So in physics major, as I said, uh, uh, for now, because you don't have project experience, you can talk about books and courses. But for future, I would say get internships and write those things. So those are the project ideas. Essentially, what I mean is find internships either in the institute, outside the institute, or do course course projects, uh, in-semester projects with the faculty here. That will enhance your CV. Okay? Projects. Uh, so I can't give a specific ideas, right? Because like, like I don't know what you are interested in. Idea is up to you, but do in-semester in course projects. Is attending conferences, workshop during short break winter? Yeah, that is true. So that's the only time uh, winter, if you want to do something, just attend workshop and conferences and schools. And uh, doing internships in winter is a waste of time. But it's good to attend uh, conferences and workshops. So Ayush is saying, should we put uh, school, career achievement, scientific or sports or culture in your CV? I really recommend not, unless they are very significant. Unless you want mathematical Olympiad or something or something very, very big, I do not. I would again suggest that extracurricular not required. Okay, I'm sorry to say that. In your PhD, yes. Internships, not really. Uh, PhD, yes, maybe. And uh, in PhD, please don't write things about school. It appears very, very, you know, sad. So uh, what PhD CV should mostly look like is, again, you know, your research things. And I'm going to attach some references at the end of it, and you can see. So Rita Chita, how do we write statement of purpose? Again, there are documents on that. Do your own groundwork. Write something. Talk to your faculty. Bring me a draft or bring Bias a draft. We can suggest you. But you have to start. You have to take initiative. You have to be bold, and you have to work hard. Okay? How do we write a CV? Uh, same thing. Uh, again, uh, maybe you do not have many things. You write what kind of courses you have done. 
um, uh, you say what field you are interested in and you can again rather than letter of motivation you can maybe write one small paragraph or bullet wise points on uh, why you are interested in a particular field uh, if you have done some online courses list them and um, and if you have had if you, or you can as i said like you can uh, so sometimes people do some things on their own right like for example when i was young i i used to work a lot in fractals and on my own you know i and my friend we would just make some fractals using c you know uh, coding language so uh, again uh, up to you as i said it's up to you uh, but it is possible okay and it is possible uh, cv is not completely blank i'm pretty sure if you were applying to college you would have written something in your cv so it's up to you uh, again uh, use internet's help um, show it to your uh, advisors your faculty your seniors your friends get feedback and make a cv okay it's not impossible you can do it how early should we start start i mean see these kind of things don't have any deadlines right if you are applying to individual people you can get a position in april also and you can uh, get a position in december also so i would say spend time in december making lists and everything and uh, start applying in uh, january okay oh, sorry uh, yeah start applying january onwards keep applying till april yes sir that's it okay anything else from people here uh, excuse Based me on sir what I said? Uh, yeah so i have a question uh, so what if i can't choose between two subjects uh, and i have, and i have interests in both of them basically uh, like i haven't decided my major subject yet so what yes, if yes. i get an internship in say photonics and later on i find myself taking bio as a major then uh, like would that be a waste uh, for no 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 so that is maybe? that is another thing so people keep changing fields your instructor dr vyas he had a phd in astrophysics now he images retina right so people keep changing the yeah. field again my request is to look at t equals zero do not look in future do not look in past um but just make yourself capable uh, have a good time take a decision based on t equals zero whatever variables you have among them if you can find that okay this institute is maybe better or this professor is better or um, you know these kind of things based on the given information you have you take the best decision and then don't worry about it don't have this regret later ki oh aisa ho gaya aisa ho gaya because that is life that is part of growing up don't worry about it take the best decision based on the present evidence okay that's it okay okay sir thank you uh you were talking yeah, about so. how to not write an email to uh, professors outside india so this is something i read a very long time ago it's by professor paul goldberg w goldberg yeah yeah so you know many iit people again iit right the name has uh -huh. taken some bad name because of this yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it okay. i am mean, yeah so i have something also to share but i guess i should not maybe do it publicly um okay i will leave it basically i have a student email from one of our very bright students actually cr of one of the class uh, i actually like him i asked him to write a letter of motivation for uh, uh, basically not letter but he asked me recommendation for cert and i wanted to test him so i said can you tell me why you want to go to cert like can you drop me a paragraph for motivation and he wrote a line and i have shown this line to many of you who have visited me in person and if you replace high energy physics by optics it reads exactly the same okay so so you you have to do this test that if you want to show interest in a field if you replace that field by something else the whole paragraph should not read the same right it had very generic things i'm interested in high energy physics i want to learn more about the field i want to gain my experience and skill in that field so that my career progresses these kind of things no if you are saying high energy physics you talk about quarks you talk about the colliders you talk about you know things which are actually physics actually science not some you know like your own career and you know like like skills and so again uh, that is a good test if you are writing a letter to a professor if you can write exactly the same letter to another professor by just changing the field perhaps you have not written a good letter okay so use this as a test i mean he was surprised like he didn't realize when he came to me i'm like dude you change high energy physics by optics and it reads the same then he immediately oh sir now i realized okay so that's how you have to work uh, okay and uh, so anything else no i think that's it okay thank you very much i have another office call to uh, conduct for 101 uh, rita chita you can have these recordings uh, please share it uh, with uh, friends um, i might consider putting them on 137 inverse but that depends on what they think okay yes so, thank you everyone who has joined and uh, i am also available uh, the reason i did this online is because too many people were there i wanted to say this to each of you but then i realized that if there are like you know more than 15 20 people uh, all of them worried about srfp and internship so i thought i should do a common session okay
thank you very much okay. for doing okay. this very good very good take care yeah. thank you sir uh, yeah. thank okay. you sir for your time and there are some